In the world of AI, the GPT DAL E3 model stands out for its ability to craft images from scratch. Everywhere we hear about its remarkable skills in creating visuals. But how good, bad or accurate are these images when compared to reality? Today, we're in for an exciting test. We'll be examining three microorganisms and comparing genuine microscope footage to images generated by the AI. Let's take a closer look and see why we might not always want to rely on it. In our first example, we look at water fleas, also known as Daphnia. What stands out immediately about these tiny organisms is their transparent exterior. Through their see-through shell, you can spot the heart, which beats at an impressively rapid pace. And running through its body is the digestive tract, here visible with greenish digested particles, a sign of a recent feast. This particular Daphnia also carries a cluster of green orbs. These aren't part of its digestive system, but are, in fact, eggs, readying the next generation of Daphnia to come into the world. Their most noticeable features are the two sets of antennas, with the larger set acting as paddles to propel them through their aquatic environment. This bouncing movement through the water is what's given them the nickname water flea. Having observed a real Daphnia, we turn to what Delhi 3 can generate when asked for an anatomically correct rendition. And here's what we've got. The output, however, diverges from our expectations. The AI's interpretation has an exoskeleton, but not the transparent kind we're looking for. While it fits into the crustacean category to which Daphnia belong, the resemblance ends there. Another generated image misses the mark as well. Daphnia are known for their large, distinct eyes, yet the AI has rendered something more akin to the compound eyes of a fly. And the number of limbs? Oh, it's a wild party. We're expecting two pairs, not an octopus's dream. Just how many legs did it add? Enough to make a centipede envious. On the third try, the AI finally opts for a transparent exoskeleton, but yet again with an inexplicable enthusiasm for extra legs. Acknowledging the mixed results with the water flea, it's time to shift our focus to the equally intriguing rotifers. Let's cross our fingers and hope our AI fares better with these microscopic marvels in the next part of our exploration. Rotifers are these cool little critters that get their name for a distinctive feature that looks like a wheel at the top of their heads. This wheel is a circle of super fine hairs called cilia. They twirl these hairs to create a vortex in the water, drawing in tiny food particles straight into their mouths. It's a clever feeding strategy, and we can see it in action here in this footage. Watch how it works. They churn the water, and as the particles come swirling in, they munch them up using what's called a mustax, kind of like a tiny internal mill, right beneath their head. You can see it moving, rhythmically opening and closing as it grinds up their meal. Rotifers are not just one-trick ponies, though. They're incredibly versatile. They can stretch out and shrink back in an accordion-like fashion, which helps them navigate the aquatic playground they live in. And at the back, they've got what you could call their secret weapon, a foot complete with sticky toes. This foot isn't for walking, it's for sticking onto surfaces in the water so they can stay put or catch a break from swimming. There's a staggering variety of these rotifer species, several thousand in fact, Let's see if DALL-E 3 can capture the complex structure of a rotifer in its generated image. So, I asked it to give me a picture of one, and here's the first attempt. Well, to say it's interesting would be an understatement. I have to say, I'm at a loss for words, and the AI said it added all the right parts, like cilia and organs. But this picture, it's not really hitting the mark. 
If you squint, you might imagine the wheel part, but you'd have to squint really hard. Not one to give up, I tried again. Now, this second attempt is something else. It's somehow even more baffling than the first and has taken us into territory I didn't think we'd explore. If you're feeling a bit uneasy looking at this, you're not alone. It's like the AI decided to give us a crash course in trypophobia, the fear of small holes clustered together. It's a real condition that can cause discomfort for some people, so apologies if this image caught you off guard. Okay, third time's the charm, right? Well, it's not worse, but we're still miles from a rotifer. This last picture kind of looks like a cross-section of a mitochondrion. And that probably rings a bell, doesn't it? Mitochondria, they're the powerhouses of the cell, as every biology teacher loves to point out. It's one of those classic science facts that sticks with you, just like the mitochondria stick in their cells, doing their critical energy work. Now, this creature here is a tardigrade, and I bet it's probably the most famous and beloved microorganism out there. With its eight chunky, stubby legs complete with clearly visible claws, it's quite distinctive. Tardigrades are also endearingly referred to as moss piglets, which points to their favorite hangouts. Many tardigrades come equipped with these tiny eyes that you can see here, and that little snout-like feature at the front of its head, that's the mouth part, which, surprise, surprise, is used for feeding. Typically surrounded by a couple of claws or more, it helps them latch onto their food source and suck it dry. Let's take a peek at what Daily 3 brings to the table and see if we'll still be able to sleep tonight. Well, okay, it's not as bad as I feared. It's got a vibe of tardigrades as seen under an electron microscope, but anatomically speaking, it's still off the mark. No need to comment on the legs. Dell E3 seems fixated on them and has generously given our friend an extra one up front. Those protrusions that are supposed to be claws? They remind me more of shaggy carpet fibers than the pointed claws we saw on a real tardigrade. I think we should try another image. And hey, this one's a bit better than the first. At least this creature has proper claws. However, the head or the mouth part resembles that of a walrus more than anything. Giving it one more go. So here's another version, and this time I'm somewhat impressed. We've still got an extra leg situation, but the mouth part is getting closer to what we'd see under an electron microscope. At least it's unmistakably a tardigrade which is more than we could say for the water flea and the rotifer attempts. All in all, our journey into AI-generated microorganisms was a bit of a letdown, showing that DAL E3 isn't quite ready to capture the vast diversity of microscopic life on our planet. Maybe it would be worth revisiting this in a few months to see how far the technology has advanced. I'm pretty confident we'll see some improvements by then. I truly hope you found today's exploration as fascinating as I did. If so, remember to click that subscribe button, it means a lot. Stay curious, and I'm looking forward to our next adventure together.